O God of all creation. I require treatment normally as the rest will be treated. Some pains, some pains, and then came to realize that I'm disabled. An inclusive world is a better world. An enabling environment that is fostered by all for all. Oliver Sacks once said, I wish for a world that views disability, not as a hindrance, but as unique attributes that can be seen as powerful assets if given the right opportunities. This is exactly what the University of Nairobi seeks to achieve through the Disability Mainstreaming Committee. An entity that is charged with the training, policy review, and monitoring of the implementation of inclusivity strategies and policy across the entire university. That as we make all our decisions, we take into account the particularities of persons with ability, they get included and they get to get the same kind of services that the other people who are otherwise able, who are able as opposed to those who are able differently, are able to provide, whether they are students or staff or stakeholders. Students with disability have unique challenges that require attention. So, of course, uh, that doesn't mean that the university hasn't been supporting the students, but they have been supported in the past and they continue to be supported. Only that this now uh, provides an opportunity to get to provide uh, personalized attention to the students and staff. And the matters are, are, are handled very fast. So, I mean, all the problems that you just encounter and, and it's sorted. Disability is not inability. So we believe that those who have been admitted to the University of Nairobi, whatever form of disability or physical ch or challenges that they have, their mental capabilities is the best and that the, if we, we equip them with the necessary skills and knowledge, they will be able to serve like any other person out there in the country. For the members of the University of Nairobi community living with disability, however, the journey has not been easy. I would want somebody to type me my work. I have a lot of things. I love writing, so I would like somebody to help me in writing and in typing my work, but who is that ready to do it? Okay, if they, they are, but how will they, will they take it heartfully? No. Will they really take it normally that Dean is higher? Where he is with his condition, really I should help him. First of all, accessing a book in Braille, it's, I think, very, there are very little books, of which even some of them don't relate to my course at all. So, uh, at such a cases, I have to have a friend maybe to read for me uh, what it what it's entailed in the other books. Uh, with the technology, sometimes you'll go to libraries and you find that with the computers they don't have the screen readers, which, which I'm supposed to use to navigate the to operate the computer. So maybe I love to organize on how a computer maybe will be fixed with a screen reader like Joe's or NVIDIA to help me use it. So. Uh, it's quite challenging. Specifically at the University of Nairobi, uh, students who are deaf go through a lot because uh, we have the need on accessibility most of the time which are not met by the university on time. What I try to mean by that, when I joined in well, with my first degree, that time it was good. Then when I started to do my master's in sociology, I didn't get to complete because of uh, lacking the uh, interpreter, because they didn't have full-time interpreters. For me, as a person with physical disabilities, mobility challenges, I think um, our institution you know, hasn't really met the mobility requirement that is you know, good like most, some of our buildings are still inaccessible, there are no lifts, there are no ramps. Um, if I wanted to, you know, go to my hostel from the main campus, sometimes it become a challenge to get transportation, so I'd need to wheel myself to the hostel, which is quite a distance. So I think that's one of the greatest challenges that I've faced. 
The journey has been consistent as key university stakeholders are inducted into the historic process of leveling the infrastructural, academic, and support ground for all to thrive. We have said that uh, everybody must be brought on board. And in that policy, we identified a person with disability, a staff from each and every faculty to represent the, the issues of the student welfare in that. Then the next layer in that policy is to have an academic staff who is also in the Senate representing the student at each and every faculty level. Uh, support in terms of mobility, moving from uh, halls of residence to lecture theatres. It could be requests to words like uh, reasonable accommodation for uh, extra time in examination and of course the faculties do this but it makes it a bit easier for the students to have a central point where they can simply call or email or even show up and get all these things done with little effort because it can be crazy to navigate the complex university structure to seek support for anyone but for people with disability it's even more complicated. Because you might be sympathizing with them, but to them it is normal. So we have had to learn to be able to understand how they behave so that we do not make them appear as if they really need help. Because sometimes there are certain things they can do which we might not do. So due to uh, disability mainstream in University of Nairobi, we've been able to learn a lot to be able to handle them. I think the best thing that has happened so far is the inclusion of uh, the persons with disability in uh, student leadership. That has been great for us, so that the student leadership now cuts across board. As we engage with them as student leaders in the various campuses, we are able to talk even to the students with disability, and their needs are brought on board, and they are addressed amongst the rest of the student population, both security needs, safety needs, and even other needs that, that uh, come up. The ramps have been built, okay? Uh, we are able to you are able to easily access our facilities. If you come to the student's clinic, you are able to use your wheelchair and easily access the facility. If you go to staff clinic, we have an entry which allows you to use the wheelchair and also be able to access it. Ideal scenario uh, for me is when uh, we will have uh, a facility, a very elaborate facility, uh, what we call a, 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 an elaborate resource center for persons with disability, that will be headed by a person, a person with, a, with a disability who lives in this world who can understand those kind of things so that when you go there you are able to go this is the office where the issues of what they fall and what are the things you need to be equipped with there you go for, for, for the, the issue of the speaking and what needs to be done you go to another office where it's a issue for physical challenge and the, you can get a, everything that you require in that office. So that's what we look forward to. In the recognition that limitations only go so far, the university has over time partnered with various industry stakeholders so as to accelerate and scale up inclusivity within its infrastructure and systems of operation. We have one lecturer who can, who can do braille, Dr. Odur, but of course he doesn't teach everything. So for his own course, he's able to handle that. But for the others we need, we get special help in order to, to be able to read the answers and therefore to be able to assign marks for the questions. Uh, what we did with our uh, what you call disability mainstreaming committee is to have a two-day workshop to develop a proposal to brainstorm on all the aspects from academic, from social, from uh, welfare, from the upkeep, careers and all that and we have come up with a very comprehensive uh, uh, need kit whereby we are now presenting like a catalogue of needs to each corporate. There is short term, there is medium term needs and there is long term needs. So even as we say that there is still a journey to be held, the glass is half full, not half empty. And that is thanks to the sensitivity, thanks to the support and thanks to the recognition that all members of this university have been able to realise on persons matters inclusion. The responsibility we have is not ours alone of nurturing and mentoring these young people to be able to do that what they need to do or what need to be done. We believe that uh, we require partnership. And uh, 
partners uh, from the industry, partners from the academia, other uh, institutions of higher learning, as well as even the general community where our campuses are. You can dance with your upper body and actually dance to the rhythm of that song quite well. Um, there's one lady from the US, she's called Chelsea Hill. She got an accident, I think 10 years ago. She went out with friends, drunk, and then apparently the, the person who was driving the car was also drunk. So they got into an accident and from there she got an, she, she became paralyzed. But before her paralysis, she used to be a dancer. And even after paralysis, she's still a dancer and she dances quite well. She's, I think, in one of the you know, biggest dance groups in the US. So she's one of my role models. You can check her out. <laughs> she's great. Yeah. To the admin, I'll give a thumbs up. We are trying, we are improving. I like the pace. And if it's possible, let's make the university be a world class to the special needs people. I know it is a world class, but let's make it be more accommodative, more hospital, and everything will be awesome. We will really appreciate that. We already appreciate it. Uh, and as deaf students can suffer, actually, if you don't have a good interpreter who has got good services, so the deaf themselves, when they come in, they should work hard, exceedingly harder than the other hearing students because the challenge is big. However, when you get stuck, for example, you cannot maybe like ask your colleague without an interpreter. So maybe like the interpreter is not with you in the hostel. They are at home. You are alone. So you need people. You need to interact with your colleagues. And we make sure you make friends with the hearing students. Socialize. Teach your friends signs. That way, you will feel your part and with the, when we don't have an interpreter. I will convince the persons with special needs in various institutions, the high school and primary level, to join this great, inst great institution, the University of Nairobi. The University of Nairobi has got a liaison office for the persons with special needs. And this liaison office is in whatsoever way supporting them and ready to listen to each and every grievances they bring forth.